Stable Diffusion XL allows you to create some amazing AI art. But what if you want to take it a step further and create images of yourself or any other person, place, or thing? Well, that's where LoRa models come in or low rank adaptation. And that's exactly what I'm going to show you how to build right now. Now for this, we're using the latest version of Koya SS. I've done tutorials on this in the past and they've changed quite a bit over the last few months. I think they've made it a little bit easier though, so let's jump right in and get started. If you don't already have Koya SS installed on your system, what you need to do is go over to their GitHub page here. You can scroll down and you'll see that you can grab the latest version and there's even instructions for installing this on Linux, Windows, etc. You're going to need a few things. You're going to need to download and install Git. You're going to download and install Python as well. Now, if you don't want to go through all that hassle, I happen to have a one-click installer that you can grab off of my Patreon page. The one-click installer is really simple. It installs Python, Git, it clones the GitHub repo, and it kicks off the installation process. And then it even steps you through the rest of the installation process as well. It's really simple to use and there will be a link for that down in the description. Once that's out of the way, the next thing you'll need to do is launch the program with the GUI.bat file. That's going to kick off this window over here that you see on the left hand side. That's going to fire up and initialize everything you need to get started. Now, as you can see here, I'm running this on pretty powerful hardware. I'm running an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3090, which has 24 gigabytes of VRAM. Now, for the most part, a lot of these SDXL models, the Stable Diffusion XL, need more VRAM to train than the older SD 1.5 models did. So in most cases, you're going to need a GPU that's fairly modern and has at least 12 gigabytes of VRAM. But towards the end, I'm going to show you some tips and tricks that might be able to get you down to running on a little bit less than that. For now, let's launch the UI at 127.0.0.1.78.61 as the port. And you'll see the Koya UI here. Now, one thing I'm going to show you that's a little tip and trick is you can do question mark underscore underscore theme equals dark, and that's going to change over to a dark theme. It's going to save your eyes and my eyes just a little bit of stress. Now, to get started, you're going to see a series of tabs across the top, and this is where we're going to get started. You'll see Dream Booth, LoRa, Textual Inversion. For now, we want to select the LoRa tab. The first thing we need to do when we get here is jump down to this model section. You notice it had Stable Diffusion 1.5 selected by default. We're going to want to scroll up and do the Stable Diffusion XL Base 1.0 model. That's what we're going to train today. If you want to do a 1.5 model, not a problem, but this is what we're going to use for this tutorial. Now, before we jump over and we do anything like captioning, Let's talk about images for a minute. The first thing you need to think about is the subject that you're going to train the LoRa on. If you were doing one on Margot Robbie, for example, it's really simple to come over to Google Image Search and find a million images of her. Now, what actually makes a good image for stable diffusion training? Well, it's got to be something that has the entire person in the photo. You don't want a whole bunch of people standing around in the same photo as a person. So something like this collage that has three images of her, probably not a good one to start with. Anything that's sort of a close up, different lighting styles help. You want them wearing different clothing, have different lighting styles, different backgrounds, different environments. That's going to make your Laura model more flexible in the end. You also want high resolution images. So I typically come over here to tools. I go to size and then large. That's going to filter the image results down to large images. Now, if you're using photos of yourself because you want to create a Laura in your own likeness, you can just use your camera or your phone take a whole bunch of pictures. Just again, make sure that you're wearing different clothes. You have different lighting and different environments. Otherwise, you're going to have a model that's overfit to whatever you were wearing or whatever environment you were in when you took your photos. How many photos are enough? Well, I typically start with around 10 to 12. That seems to be sort of the sweet spot where you can get enough data out of the images without having to go overboard and have a really long training time. See, the number of images you have directly impacts the length of time that it takes to train a model. So I've gone ahead and I've selected about 10, 12 files that we're going to start with for my model that I'm going to create for myself. And all I've done for now is I've dropped those into a folder called Beloved SDXL YouTube. Next piece, we're going to jump back over to Koya and we're going to caption these files using the blip captioner. What that's going to do is it's actually going to run these through a neural network that's going to analyze the images 
and then tag them with elements that the AI can actually see in the images. And you'll see what I mean here in a moment. So for that, we'll jump over to utilities. You can see basic captioning. We're gonna click on blip captioning. Image folder to caption, you're gonna go ahead and select that folder that I just showed you or wherever your images happen to be. Caption file extension, we're gonna leave it .txt. Prefix to add to blip caption. This is the prefix. This is what it's going to add before the caption inside of each of the text files. And since I'm going to call my tag word, my sort of trigger keyword for my Laura B love, we're going to go ahead and use that as the caption. So whatever you're going to call your Laura, and we'll talk about that in just a moment, go ahead and use that here. The reason this is important is because when you load your Laura into Stable Diffusion, you want something that it knows is you. So if you were training a Laura of Margot Robbie, you would just use her name, Margot Robbie Woman. But in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use something more unique. Now I've gone and back and forth on this and I know in my last video I said, use a celebrity lookalike. I've seen people have mixed results from that. So you can either try to look for a celebrity lookalike or you can use a unique phrase or word here. In my case, I'm gonna go with be love though. You can keep the rest of this the same as it is and you'll go ahead and just click on caption images. If you go ahead and load up your window that you had when you first started Koya, you can see that right now it's starting to load up. It found 12 images, it's loading the blip caption and this really only takes maybe about 30 seconds to do the whole thing and it's done. Now jump back over to the folder and now you'll notice every single one of the images also has a text file associated with it. And when we open one of those up, we see some keywords. Be love a man in a blue shirt is taking a selfie. Perfect. So what you can do is you can come in here and you can add additional keywords or phrases. You can actually modify these caption files. The more detailed they are, the more you're gonna be able to prompt this model later. I think this is good though. Now I can say things like be love wearing a blue shirt and it knows guidance wise what to do. Cool. On to the next step then. Now that that's out of the way, we're gonna jump back over to the Laura section and we're gonna scroll down to the data set preparation. We're gonna click on that. And now what you'll be able to do here is you can use the instance prompt. So like I said earlier, we're gonna use be love for mine. And then the class prompt, you can do this as the type of thing that you're trying to create. What this does is it just lets Stable Diffusion know what you're trying to actually create. So in my case, I'm a man, so I'm gonna put man. You could put boy, girl, woman, coffee cup, whatever it happens to be, that's what you're gonna name it. The next thing to do here is set up your folder. So we're gonna go for the training images. That's gonna be the same folder that we just did the captioning in. In this case, be love SDXL YouTube, select that. I'm gonna set our repeats to 20 instead of 40. That's just the number of times that it's gonna train on each image. 40 is just a little bit overkill in most cases. And the next piece is optional, but it is something I recommend if you're doing a man or a woman, and it's regularization images. What these are essentially is a folder that's filled with hundreds if not thousands of sort of reference images of the subject. Not the subject as in you or the thing that you're trying to train, but as in men or women. And in this case, the class prompt is man. So we'd want regularization images of men. So you can see I have this reg file here and I have one man. You can see all of the different images that I have here of men. What this does is it just helps guide and style things a little bit better so that Stable Diffusion knows, hey, this is what a man looks like. Don't ever make this person look like a woman. This has 5,980 pictures of men in here. You don't have to do this work yourself though. I happen to have these over on my Patreon for download and you can find those in my Koya SS tutorial files. I'll link that down in the description as well. Finally, for this page, destination training directory, you're gonna go ahead and open up your folders and you're gonna select the place that you want the output files to be placed. So this is gonna be where your actual safe tensor files are generated, the LoRa files that you're gonna be able to use once this is done. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that same folder where I had everything else. I'm gonna create a new directory. I'm just gonna call this Love Final. Select that folder. And the other thing you wanna do here is click Prepare Training Data and then Copy Info to Respective Fields. That's really important because there's a whole bunch of folders that need to be populated on the main Laura page that's gonna do it for you. Once that's done, you're gonna go up to the Folders tab 
and you'll see that it should have selected everything that you need. The output directory for the train model is in BLove final model. The logging directory is in the log file. And then over here, you notice that it didn't set the regularization directory. So we're going to go ahead and make sure that that gets set. Another thing to note in the model section is you want to save precision if you have a newer RTX video card set to BF16. If you have an older non-RTX, let's say an GTX 1070, you'd set this to FP16 instead. If you happen to have a configuration file, you can absolutely use that here. I happen to have a couple on my Patreon page for both an RTX 3090 sort of optimized settings, as well as a low VRAM version in case you have an older card or a card with less than 12 gigabytes of VRAM. Don't worry if you're not one of my Patreon subscribers, I'm going to go through the settings one by one so you can understand them a little bit better. And for this, we scroll all the way down to the bottom where we see parameters over here on the left hand side. Go ahead and expand that out. That's going to show you everything that we're going to go through now. First, we'll start with train batch size. We have that set at one. You can move this up. It's going to use much more VRAM, but that does speed up training. It's basically the number of images that it batches at a single time. For epics, this is basically a way to split up the training. Remember earlier we had 20 repeats set for each image. So that means if we had one image, we're going to do 20 steps or 20 iterations and we're going to be done. With 10 images, it would be 200 steps and so on. If we have this set to 10 epics, that means we're training 2000 steps or 10 times what we were since we have 10 images. And in this case, the other setting that's important here is save every n epics. So since we have this set to one, this means it's going to save every single epic, so 10 epics in total. And at the end, we're going to have 10 safe tensor files. We're going to have 10 LoRa files. And I'll talk about in a minute why that's important and why we actually have more than one when we're done training. But for now, you've just got to take my word for it. Now for caption file extension, remember we had that at TXT for the blip captioning, so leave that there. We're in a cache latency and cache latency to disk. This just helps speed things up a little bit. The optimizer, we're going to use Ada Factor. It's pretty standard for this. And you're going to want these extra arguments added to the optimizer. Scale underscore parameter equals false relative underscore step equals false warm up underscore init equals false. I'm going to have that in the description, but that's important just to add these to the optimizer so that you get the correct results at the end. Now for learning rate, this is one that I've trained a whole bunch of LoRa's and it doesn't seem to matter that much. Now, one thing that I have noticed is the higher the learning rate, sort of the earlier in the epics, the 10 files that it's going to create at the end, the earlier ones are going to be more usable. It's sort of how quickly this ends up training and overfitting the model. I like having this at 0003. That seems to be the sweet spot for what I've found. Max resolution needs to be 1024 comma 1024. That's what Stable Diffusion XL expects. So that's what we're going to leave it to. And if you enable buckets, you don't have to go through that long process of resizing all of your images. You'll recall back in the day, and by back in the day, I mean about six months ago, you had to crop and resize every single one of your images that you use for training. You no longer need to do that if you enable buckets. For text encoder learning rate and UNet learning rate, we're going to use that same value we use for the other learning rate, 0 0.0003. Make sure no half VAE is selected. Network rank. This actually increases the detail that's retained in your LoRa file. So I typically go with 256 for this and then network alpha of one. Now this means that every single one of your safe tensor files that's generated by this is going to be about 1.7 gigabytes in size. So if you don't have as much VRAM as say an RTX 3090, you can set the network rank to something like 32 and then the alpha to something like 16. That's going to reduce the memory requirements but you aren't going to get as much detail in the final LoRa that's generated. Next, we're going to click on Advanced, scroll all the way down to Gradient Checkpointing, make sure that that is selected. And finally, don't upscale bucket resolution. Also want to check that one as well. Once you're happy with that and everything looks good, you can go ahead and click on Start Training. 
What this is going to do is this is going to fire up your GPU. You're going to hear a lot of sounds coming from your fans. Depending on the settings that you went with, expect this training to take several hours to complete, sometimes as much as a day. And once everything is said and done, you should have a folder that has 10 safe tensor files. These are your actual LoRa's. Now for this, what I'm going to do is load up Focus. That's sort of my favorite stable diffusion art generator that you can run locally. And we're going to go ahead and load up the model. If you open the focus directory, you can see there's this models section. Now you can go over there and you should see a subfolder called LoRa's. When you select that, you can drop in your safe tensor files in here. They're going to automatically load when the user interface loads, which this is what the user interface looks like. Now, trick, you can grab that same question mark theme dark from Gradio that we used before, and you can make this dark theme as well. Save your eyesight a little bit. Go ahead and tick the advanced button in the bottom right. That's going to load everything up so you can actually start to select some of the settings you need to load up your LoRa. The base model, instead of Juggernaut, I'm going to go with SDXL base since that's what our LoRa was trained on. And then in LoRa 1, we're going to select one of our newly created safe tensor files. Make sure that the weight is set to something higher, so like 0.98. You want it close to 1 or thereabouts. That's going to set the weight of your LoRa file for the final training. It's going to be how much your LoRa is actually used to influence the images that come back. Now at this point, all that's left is to go ahead and drop in a prompt. So I said, photo of beloved person. Now these are a little wonky. I'd probably want a negative prompt in here. What I like to do with focus is go ahead and play with some of the styles. One of my favorite is MRE, Heroic Fantasy. I'm going to select that, go over to the model. Everything's still selected just the way we had it. And then what we can do is put our action prompt in here. So photo of your trigger word, so be love in my case and then man, woman, person, whatever you used as the classifier. Now, I know I used man in the rest of the video, but in this older Laura that I happen to select here, I'm using person. So once you do that, you can click on generate and it should start spitting back some images that resemble you. And there we go, there's our first image. Not bad. I think that's a pretty decent representation of what I'd expect to get out of this. You find this just as useful and you get back some amazing results out of your Laura file. Can't wait to hear about it down in the comments below. And as always, thank you so much. Go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already, and we'll see you next time. I'm the virtual prophet in the tech town. Break it down, AI, wearing the crown. From basics to complex, never let you down. All your tech, AI, earning the renown.